right, check one, two, everybody. Hello to everybody who is swinging on in. Welcome Twitch, welcome YouTube. Also welcome to all the Steam view viewers. I'm so eager to get this stream started. Just a moment or two longer, guys. I'm almost there. Gonna be a fun one today. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host, your guide, and your servant, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, to help you understand all things going on in Everspace 2. Today, we got a couple of things to knock out. A little bit of, you know, elements in the community side that we're adjusting, tweaking, refining to better serve you guys. That simply looks like Discord events as of right now. For those of you who are part of the Discord, you have already seen it. We have a Discord event, it's live. It shows that there's a stream going on. You can click on that link. Now, as far as I'm aware, you can only plug in one link. So right now we have it at twitch.tv. We're gonna look into that and see if there's a way to add multiple links. Otherwise, that's gonna help you guys know exactly when upcoming events are happening. And it's not gonna be useful just for the streams. No, it will also be useful for any upcoming beats or teasers or anything like that. I don't know if there's any of those coming up at all. So uh, yeah, so that's gonna be fun. Otherwise, we had an incredible ride with the last two weeks of doing a racing challenge. We'll be talking about that and showing some stuff 
Uh, and then we're going to be doing screenshots. And you you guys already saw the thumbnail and you guys have already been talking about their ship customization. There's new ship customization. So we're going to get to that very soon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up where I left off in our game. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to finish out this side mission. And then we're going to go show you what we can do to this ship straight out of the gate without having anything truly unlocked yet. And then I'm going to have some fun and show you a bunch of cool examples. Let's get right on into it. So this is where we left off, literally right where we left off, where we are doing the back to work mission. Let's top this out, shall we? Who are you? Your new wingman. I was sent over from Alcyone Station to escort you. I thought we were out of combat pilots. Well, since you're here, help us get the gate fixed. Uh, look, I'm just a wingman, not a mechanic. You can't just be one thing if you want to survive out here. That's a given if you want to work in this team. All right, I'll see what I can do. I just looked over and I just saw teasers of teasers. Actually, I want to just, I want to point this out real quick, real quick. The reason why we're moving into the Discord events formula is because it's not just a, oh, hey, there's something coming up. It has a timer included on it. It tells you when information will be given, okay? So it's not a teaser saying, hey, we're gonna make an announcement soon. It says, hey, we're gonna have an announcement at this time. You can wait for it. You can wait for it with us. We can talk about it the moment it drops so you don't miss it. That's the big difference, all right? So it's not a teaser for a teaser. It's actually a timer for when we will have information to share and you can plot out your schedule accordingly. All right, now let's get into this. Now let's get into this. We're gonna grab this energy uh, unit. Say the gate flex power. I'll have a look around and see if I can improvise. Are you a good fighter? I have a few tricks up my sleeve. Why do you ask? We never worked together, so I'm just trying to figure you out. Yeah, we've been having a lot of good conversation on the PR side of things, just to make sure everything is in a quality state to deliver to all of you, all right? It's good stuff. This home stretch is... I'll make a quick sweep of the mine it's a fun one. Everything's in order. All right. Let's get through here. Check out the mine. Take some iron. Whoop. Some crystals. We're good. Think I passed the test? No. Come back out at once. We're under attack. Close to the mine, I'll handle this. All right, I'm Do done. something, they're slaughtering my people. Cool. Now for those just joining the stream, if you've never been in one of our Rockfish streams before, the kind of gist of it is this. I will be showing you gameplay of our updated story. We are going through this save all the way through till the 1.0 release. And that's gonna include little teasers and plot twists okay. along the way. No, I am not okay. This place should have been protected. Look, I'm doing what I can here. Not by you, by the people who sent us here. You can make a lot of money mining this pit, but you still always have a responsibility for your people. I'm afraid that's not how GNB operates. You may be right on that account. Yes, this settles it. Settles what? All right. These are the coordinates of our next stop. It's even deeper in outlaw territory. You fly ahead and make certain that it's safe. My team will bunker up in the mine until then. All right. But in addition to just, you know, all the delivery thereof, we also have these streams to be a direct line of communication to all of you, answer questions, which will be answered in pockets. So if you have a question, you can ask directly in the chat, tag us, and we will respond at intervals during the stream. The end of the stream is always devoted to our community. So that's why we have community challenges, we have showcases, we have all of that fun stuff to highlight what you guys have been up to, just to have a little bit of fun together. One 
bomb thrower and a batch of fuel tanks. Someone's about to build their own little base, it seems. And right here, in the midst of us firing at this bomb thrower, we actually have a new weapon sound. Not sure if you caught it or not, but we'll do it again. This is the flak. You're going to see a lot of little adjustments and improvements and additions and all those sorts of things during the course of these streams. But there's a... You're going to see a lot of tweaks. A lot of them. All right, let's grab these Atheum Crystal Deposits as well. And now we got to blow up all these structures. Clear the way. One problem less, but there could still be more. Don't want that weapon. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. All right. Better make one last sweep of the area before calling the others. All right. Not a bad find. Don't encounter this too often. Completed Outlaw Hunt 1. Oh, whoop, that's the wrong asteroid. Over here. Classic. Yordano? This is your wingman speaking. I ran into a bit of trouble, but the area's clear now. Hello? Scrap. Better check on him. Alright, let's head back over to Giordano. Probably land at a station where we might have some ship customization to do. Uh, yeah, see, and I like the extra lines on the HUD for role reference. Yeah, we included that. It's actually in the last update, so you can kind of see where you're at on the plane within the game. No, it's not realistic because there's no up in space. But for gameplay purposes, it does help. Some folks Team. find that alignment Anyone? a little bit more clearly. Good thing I'm still locked in on their signature. All right. Looks like they haven't gotten far. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to be too pedantic about the realism in our game. I hope that's clear. But, uh, yeah. Overall, we think it's a nice addition that you can toggle on or off should you desire it or should you not desire it. No biggie. time oh doc first so you found us you didn't tell me this was part of your itinerary i've been flying past this place for weeks now wondering when i would ever have the courage to do this my team won't survive much longer working for those fools this is where we will build ourselves a better life what how do you think you'll be doing that by looking after each other by taking what we can and doing what is necessary. It sounds like you want to set up your own little outlaw operation. Is your team in on this? We're all in the same boat here. We had enough of Grady and Brunt screwing us over. Here, take this. It's your payment for protecting us back there. We will not see each other again. Right. I'm the last one to judge you on a move like that. 
All right, so guys, we are gonna continue doing the story and whatnot, but I know you guys are super eager to see how customization has been shaped and transformed. Now, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of a taste. This is not complete, but I was given permission to start showing how things are coming together, and that's what I'm excited to do, right? That's what I'm excited to do. So this is our first sampling of more. What we are gonna do is we're gonna go in here and look at that we can already directly see the addition of some details. Now, this is a new save. So for example, we don't have like many of the colors unlocked. Um, and because you want me to get there, let's just go to window tint. And you see we have two starting colors, the aptly named yellow one. But what happens when you click on it? Boom, that's, that's what it does. And we're actually gonna change because I think it looks fine with our ship. That's nice, that's pleasant. There's a lot of emptiness here though. That kind of stinks for now. I certainly hope this streamer has some examples to show in the future. But also let's go ahead and jump over to engine colors. This is gonna be a little exciting. This is gonna be a little exciting. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, oh, look at that. The lights went off and oh, oh, we have three customization options. We have the main thrusters, the boost color and the lateral thruster color. Hmm, all right. Okay, so yeah. The lights also conveniently turned off so you can see where all of those delightful little lights are coming from more easily. So yeah, if we wanted to just go straight blue, we could do that, you know, obviously. But you know, since we are using orange, maybe we just, maybe we need to go all orange for now. It's, it's a bit much, but it'll work. It's a good example, right? Or maybe we'll just swap the colors of the engine default and the boost default. So uh, individuals who are coming in, they'll be a little bit confused. They're like, wait, what? Why did, why'd you guys swap the colors? That would be funny. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But also we adjusted a couple other details such as whenever you're adjusting your emissive lights as well, the lights also do dim to make them easier to find. Here you can see that being represented like so. Anytime you ever want to take a look at the ship with all of its colorations and everything, you can always go back out and see the lights turn back on. Just a little touch that was adjusted. And again, I will say this, we're not fully done with the customization here. There's still a bit more coming. Um, it's not gonna be like super crazy game changing, but you guys do know that there's transmog in the future. That effectively means we know you have these ship modules that you'll be able to uh, do stuff with. So that is still, that's still planned. That's still in the works. That's still absolutely what we want to do. And for all intents and purposes, that will happen by 1.0. Uh, but yeah. So those are the base colors that you start with. You just have, you know, this yellow or the standard blue tint. And then you also have this yellow starting. And then the engine colors, you have just the engine default and the boost default. But again, you will also be able to adjust those lateral thrusters to your pleasure. Now, uh, this is a really good spot to just uh, pause and let's let's show some examples here that we have just so that you are aware of what this does look like. So yeah, what I have done here is I went into Everspace One for kicks and giggles and I located the selection of ship skins that we used in the DLC. And I just kind of mirrored them a little bit using the window tint and engines to add a little bit of extra flair. They're not perfect representations of those skins, but you know, they're fun regardless. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. This is the first one we've got on display. We got some blue and red engine thrusters going on there. We got some red laterals, just giving it that little extra touch to bring home that theme, that style. Capture all that glorious combat with a nice red tinted cockpit. And just in case you are wondering, no, the cockpit is not tinted when you're looking through it from the cockpit. This was intentionally done like this for gameplay related purposes. I imagine most of you can understand why. But yeah, that's example one. Let's get to the other ones.
let's get to the other ones. Let's go to the Cluster 34 ship skin. Was that a T3 wing, Orion? Wizard Jerry caught it. Yep. It's the first time you get to see those wings, too. All right. Let's go in for a ride with this Hawk F3 that is designed more according to the Cluster 34 skin of Everspace 1. Keeping things a little bit more basic, we're doing these yellow engines, keeping the laterals nice and blue. And of course, we have that yellow cockpit to match the theme overall, bringing it home. Now these, uh, there's not like a ship build for this, so it's not really designed for combat. I'm just uh, doing this for visuals. Oh, go away, we, we want the visuals. All right, we'll just pause right there. Oh, that's kind of a fun shot. Getting all those beautiful thrusters. Next! Next one, we have the Charon. Charon? Charon? Again, all of these I designed around those Everspace One skins from the DLC. So if you're like, wait, what? I didn't know that there were skins like this. Yeah, it's the, it's the DLC for Everspace One. Uh, and it's not just skins, okay? It's not a horse armor DLC pack, I can assure you. It just so happens to have five beautiful skins, but it adds a tremendous amount of content. Otherwise, you can read more about that should you desire it by heading over to Everspace One's uh, store page and looking at the DLC. Uh, but yeah, so this is the next one. This is the Beltagrades style. This one I went for a little bit more clean of an approach, given those sort of a cyan and yellow blend with the engines. And darker yellow for the cockpit. Here, let's go over here. Just some nice... Nice ways that you can bring your build together even further by just using a little splash of additional color. The laterals are solid white here. So you can't like, this is a mixture of three different colors from your, uh, from your main thrusters to your boosters to your lateral thrusters. All three of which are engines. You have your main thrusters, your boosters and your lateral thrusters. We're bringing that one together. All right, next. Let's just keep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So as the belt degrades, now we have the skull, which of course we don't have a skull graphic in here. This one's a, this one's a nice style. I like this one. I look over and I see, I'm gonna make a Skittles ship. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can inevitably do that. We are providing a pretty healthy number of colors. To be determined how many still at the moment. But we're getting there. We're getting, we're pretty, getting, feeling pretty good about it. I do like the way the engines look on this one. This one feels like it's got some gusto. There's very subtle white lights coming from the emissives, then with the white uh, boosters, the orange engines to complement the detailing. Shame we don't have any drones, but uh, just in case folks are like, wait, what, drones? Show the drones, are they customized too? No, no, we we, uh, we have not done that. But it's still something that we are looking into. It's it's a it's a chance. There's a chance that we could do something like that um, for the full release, but I cannot guarantee it will happen. Believe it or not, there's a lot of technical issues with accomplishing that task, but do know that it is something we are considering, and if it if we have time for it within the aesthetics department, as we continue moving towards the 1.0 release, we will in fact add it in. All right, and now this last one, this is gonna be one that maybe looks a little unfamiliar to a lot of you because this was the Kickstarter exclusive skin in Everspace One that I think only about 200 people actually own. That's it. But I did base this one off of that as well because this one's just dang sexy. I really I really like the, the way that this one comes together. We got the green cockpit here across this very just, I mean, you have eyes, you can, you can see. 
look at look at those. Oh. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. I am pleased. I I am quite pleased. And we hope that you are enjoying these options as well. Because there's going to be more of them. There's going to be more. We're not done. Bloodstar coming to pay me a visit? By the looks of it, yes. I've given you six different ship examples of how your engines can be colored. Your That does include your main thrusters, your boosts, as well as your lateral thrusters. All of that is in your hands. So you might be wondering, well, wait, how do the ship colors get unlocked? Like, are they just like random drops? So yeah, this is also something that we've been internally talked about. Pretty sure that we have a, a solution to uh, how you're going to acquire those. Maybe it'll happen when we continue playing our save game. Maybe it won't. We'll find out, I suppose. So let's get back to our main save. All right, so we did tweak our engines a little bit and we changed the cockpit <clears throat> for what we have available here because again, uh, it's not much that we have. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. That's nice. That's not, I wonder why, I wonder why the ship has to load in like that. That's a, that's a curious thing. Hmm. All right. Let's uh, go ahead and just show one more time. You know, we obviously have these three different slots for engine colors. All of these are shared slots of colors. Very similar to like when you're changing these three colors, they're all the, from the same pool. But the colors for the window tint and the colors for the engines are unique. So there will be complementing colors to, you know, bring it all together, but they will have their own uh, color pools and color drops uh, that you have to earn while playing. All right, let's get back into it, shall we? So here we go. And last but not least, I did want to point out that in super light, because these are unique engines, the super light engines are going to be blue. That's the intended method we want to approach with these. So in super light, they will always be this blue color. Well, have a good life, you bastards. Now what to tell Krasinski? Any location that you stop and are screwing around in, your engines will be actively color-coded according to your desires. I didn't change the engine on the ship. I thought I did. I thought I did. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that was a lot of uh, that was a lot of different images and forms of customization that I showed pretty quickly. So we might show that again at a later point in the stream. But the main goal here is to show you that we are absolutely ensuring that those promises we made for ship customiz customization are coming together. Um, we know that, you know, let's talk about this just for a brief second. I have said on a number of occasions that, oh, that would be a nice to have. That goes into this aesthetics category where if we have time, we would like to accomplish that, right? And I think that it's really easy to look at ship customization as one of those nice to haves because it's aesthetic, right? It's fully aesthetic. It has no impact on the gameplay. That being said, if you rewind the tapes, you go all the way back to the Kickstarter, we made mention that we are going to have a lot more ship customization than what's been presented through the course of early access itself. And by all means, we are making sure that we adhere to those promises. Keep in mind, some of the concepts shown during those times were in fact just concepts. So we can't bring everything that we spoke on, but we will be bringing all of those elements that we promised regarding the amount of customization all the way into the 1.0 release. So that's why if you're thinking like, 
why are you working on this now? This is aesthetics. Shouldn't this come later? Well, technically, yes, but this is also one of our promises and we are locking in all of our promises in this home stretch. Guaranteed, we're not missing any of them. That's not how we operate over here at Rockfish. All right, conclude the story. Here we go. You're back, but where's the team? I tried to catch up with them, but they were already gone. This is bad. Jordana was the last one to make a stand for us normal guys. I can only hope that management will soon move us all out of Sito. Here, take this. I can't pay you for the miners, but I still owe you and Ben for bailing on you. Thanks, and good luck to you. Yeah, it was good seeing you, man. Excellent. Nice completion of a side mission. Get some credits and experience. I kind of like having better resource range, honestly. So we're just going to keep what we've got. I also like the firepower. Yeah, I mean, that's just a straight improvement. All right, let's see what's in the shop. This one is all about resources. Uh, our credits are OK. The only one we're tracking is nanotechnology, and we don't need that yet. Of course, we could top it off. Ah, what the hell. Alright. Let's do that. I purchased one. <clears throat> That's better. Beautiful. All right, topping it off now. Very, very good. Let's get back into space. I want to search this area just for one quick element, and then we will get right back to the mission chain and uh, hopefully start finding some unlockables. There's this little base up here. It kind of reminds me of a colonial derelict wreck. Also stems from Everspace One. So we're just gonna go over here and check it out real quick. No loot here, uh -huh. I guess technically it's, it's not lying. Bulletproof container, let's grab ourselves a missile defense system as well as the main frame component. way we can go. Now, the part of the story that we are in, we are hunting down the ghost fleet. So in order to do that, we have to explore these three locations across Cedo, try to find the signal disruptors. Basically, they're outlaw beanbags so that we can reveal the location of the ghost fleet to gain access. I also think that while we're traveling here, it's a good time for us to open the doors for answering questions. So uh, we've been collecting those questions through the course of the stream. If some of you were wondering like, why isn't he answered yet? Now is the time that we're gonna answer. So Geekbyte, let's go ahead and jump in and start answering some of those questions. Howdy doody everyone and good evening, good afternoon, good morning to you all. Uh, yes, you've caused a bit of excitement with all that customization as you expected. <laughs> uh, First question actually is from Kizor on Twitch and it's not actually to do with the customization, but um, he's asking, is the team happy with the amount of RNG involved with item modifiers or are there plans to add more player control influence over the modifiers? So I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very particular, very detailed question. And the short answer is, this is something that we have been internally talking about. I wouldn't say that we are like thrilled, it's perfect, you know, 100%. Um, but I also wouldn't say we're like disappointed or upset or, you know, like we don't think that it's lacking right now. Um, that being said, you know, if we can do more in that system of itemization, uh, I've spoken on this a bit in the past, we do want to push that, right? Whether that looks like more items entirely, modifiers, catalysts, all of these elements that can adjust 
or uh, provide different opportunities, those are things that we are considering. So, and I am using my words very carefully there. Considering does not mean guaranteed, obviously, but do know that this is within our schedule so that if we do have some time to like take another cold hard look at it, especially as we're doing our balancing passes, which have to happen, there could be some adjustments and additions on that front. So I can't guarantee anything, but absolutely know that this is something that we have talked about at length. And we do have a lot of ideas too, but we don't have a lot of time. You'll get more information on that soon, in fact. All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next up, right, we're, we're diving into the customization questions now. Uh, we've got one from Thunderflame on Twitch. Uh, will there be an option to hide lateral thrusters? It could help when taking photos, so people are already excited about taking some real nice photos oh, with all that's the... A, that's, an interesting, uh, that's an interesting statement. You know, I don't think that's something that we've actually considered. That sounds like something you should slap on the forums and be like, Hey guys, I have this idea for photo mode to disable the lateral thrusters. I don't know how possible that is. I don't know how um, the the technical side of the lighting works on that front, if that's like a super easy implementation, super actionable, or if that's like an absolute pain in the ass and Marco's gonna be like, no. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but go ahead and put that on the forums. That's uh, I like that, I think that's clever. I have no idea how possible that is. Very honest, very honest. Uh, Bearded Frog and Flory uh, both ask very similar questions. Uh, okay. And they're asking, are the colors unlocked separately from the emissive light and ship colors? Um, so yeah, both of them were very, very similar. Yeah, so ship colors are all in their own category. There's 35 of those, which you guys know about. The emissives are all in their own category. There's 15, if you include the no emissives option, of course. And then for the uh, window tents and the engines, we have their own separate categories as well. So window tents has its own, uh, the number is yet to be decided. I can just give you a ballpark. It's probably gonna be between or at 10 to 15, all right? And then the engines, we are also, haven't completely decided those colors yet. There's still a little bit of adjustments, fine tunings and approvals to go through. That's also looking like it could be somewhere between 10 to 15. Each one of those pools is separate, but as you can see, those numbers are going to provide a lot of different ways that you can highlight your vessel and fly in the style that you want. Uh, Michael also does respond to the hiding lateral thrusters um, saying it's not planned, absolutely. Um, it's unlikely we'll be able to add something like that before 1.0 and I, I do appreciate that follow up, Michael. Um, so yeah, it, it is a really interesting idea. Again, I do wanna say that, but we are in the home stretch. That's an aesthetic idea. It does sound cool, don't get me wrong, don't get us wrong. But uh, the action ability is incredibly important right now for us. So, okay, next question. I kind of backtracked there, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, right, we've got next up, uh, Genal over on YouTube. Uh, will we have any other customizations uh, in terms of colors for uh, things such as weapons? I love this question so much. And as of right now, we do not have any means to do any sort of uh, weapon customization. I know that's also been an internal conversation we've had, and I suppose now is kind of like the time to like think about what that process looks like with all these other colors, uh, right? So sure, we could go in and find new solutions to how that could possibly work and add maybe some sort of crafting region, but that also goes into the whole lateral thrusters being removed. That's going to be an added sort of feature that doesn't affect gameplay at all. So. It's possible, not planned, all right? So let's set those expectations accordingly. Currently, by the way, fun little fact, there are seven different colors for the weapons. All right. Oh, cool. Um, just as a quick follow-up uh, with regarding like the engine window colors, um, are they gonna be uh, random drops or are they gonna be achievement challenge rewards? We will, we will get to that if I can trigger an event in the in the game okay. <laughs> but if it doesn't trigger i will i will just straight up answer that with what our plans look like so you guys are aware so it will oh, be answered oh. uh right dominic troy uh, over on youtube uh, will there be a beta experimental build for download after 1.0 there will be a demo that will still be live but as far as a beta no there will not be any sort of 
betas after the 1.0 release. Um, if you're talking about like early access into DLC, um, like, cause we do have DLC that is going to come out somewhere in mid 2024. We'll be starting working on that after 1.0 is released, obviously. Um, that's gonna be completely up to Michael and our processes thereof. If I recall correctly, during the process of Everspace 1, we only had internal testing for the DLC. We did not have an open beta or early access for our DLC. Um, so my guess is gonna be we're gonna stick to that same formula and that's what you guys should probably expect. So to ring that home, no, there will probably not, very likely not be any betas after 1.0. Excellent, excellent. Right, uh, Shreem over on Twitch wants to know, uh, they switch ships quite often as each of them are so unique and engaging, but sometimes it's a bit hard to play a different ship as they can't always switch devices as they run out of memory calibrators. Uh, they find themselves farming them often. Is this intended? At the moment, the memory recalibrators are kind of a double-edged sword. It is intended in that you have to earn the ability to strip your devices down. Uh, the convenience factor is actually really inconvenient, right? Uh, we're noticing that as well. It's an internal trend that we're seeing. There could be adjustments with how that's accomplished, be it the resources that are used for that memory recalibrator are eased up on, or you know, otherwise those sort of elements. But we do not want it to have this system where you get device upgrades that you could just freely add wherever you want and take them off. Because at that point, it's like, why not just have them be permanent upgrades? Because then it's just a matter of wasting your time with saying, oh yeah, you swapped your device. Now you have to empty it all of its upgrades and go to the new device and add all the upgrades. That's, we don't want to do that. There is a specific number of device upgrades that we do have planned. And we want you to have to use resources in order to shift those around. In the late game though, not going to be a problem. Not going to be a problem. At least we don't want it to be. That's what we're evaluating to ensure that it feels good. It feels right. It could probably use a little bit of adjustment, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we do. We'll see what we do. Excellent. Okay. Right, a vigilant fish over on YouTube. Uh, will dismantling be improved? Dismantling quality doesn't seem to do anything and dismantling seems to be based on item rarity alone. Yeah, I think dismantling quality was something that we had a little bit of a greater uh, mindset over whenever it was first added to the cargo unit. This will very likely receive some updates and improvements or a straight up removal. That is to be decided mostly by Hans Christian. We'll see how things move forward on this path to 1.0. Because again, we're hitting those promises first and this does fall into that category of modifiers and catalysts and uh, you know even like weapon customization of modifiers. The question was asked earlier. So uh, it's it's a tricky tricky territory there to to give a full clear response to. Marvelous. Right, last question for now. Um, Wizard Jerry's just asking: Will early access players get a, a unique weapon gear or any uh, unique weapon or gear just like Everspace One does? There are specific backer tiers that will gain unique elements. There, for example, we do have a. Oh, what's the tier called? Oh, goodness. I forgot the tier name specifically, but it includes the ability to have a custom ship skin within Everspace 2. So if you had back to Everspace 2 at that respective tier, very similarly to Everspace 1, where there was about 200 users, again, it was a bit of a higher tier, but those 200 users can say, hey, I put a lot of investing into this title. I had all my favor for this team and now I have this super cool ship skin to show for it. We do have a similar element uh, accordingly within Everspace 2. As far as everybody getting something like that, uh, it's going to be representative of the tier that was backed and all of those elements listed thereof. Obviously, there are going to be a couple of adjustments simply based on the timeline and development schedules being changed. We have been communicating that pretty clearly i'm sure we'll get plenty of questions anyway but uh we'll help you guys out as much as possible to get everyone squared away based on what you initially backed for all right Whew. cool 
Fly on pilot. I shall. Let's continue. Any clues I should look out for? If it's a beanie, it should have some dome-like structure attached Hold up. to it. But Hold even up. then, you'll need to blow the whole thing up to be certain. Woo. It's an outlaw base, all right, but I don't see a dome. It must be one of the duds. This could be real bad for us. We are level five currently. Oh, that makes things a little bit easier. I'm not even aiming towards his weak points. I am just firing my guns. Give me the kill, please. Maybe, maybe a couple more. There we go. It's level nine. <clears throat> level nine outlaw viper is a little concerning. Maybe I should have saved my alt for that. But let's see if we can navigate this regardless. I hope that some individuals watching the stream right now <clears throat> can see that there have been some adjustments pertaining to experience gains and location levels. This is something that we've been taking a lot of great care in, by the way, with the whole changing out of the dynamic level scaling system to the static location levels, okay? And a big part of this was dropped with the fall update, you guys kind of got the first glance and it's not where it's supposed to be. That's why we put it into early access to see how it felt to you all. We are making fixes, we're making adjustments. So you're gonna see a little bit of that as we're going through this entirely updated story playthrough and all of these components surrounding it accordingly. I might die here. Probably be in my best interest to go do some side missions and take on some jobs instead of trying to just only push through the story. But let's see how it turns out for us. If things go sideways, we can always try again or go do something else. After all, it doesn't make a lot of sense to look at a high security prison and be like, oh yeah, I can just totally break in there anytime I want. No, no, it's. It's going to be more challenging than where you're at, probably. You got to build up to it. And we're going into some more devious outlaw territory. They're going to be a higher level than us. That's how this works. Working as intended. At least much closer than it was for the fall of it. Ooh, renegade plating. That feels good. Let's see what else we can do. Is now the time? I think now's the time. Let's do it. Let's try it. This could prove to be real painful. Start things off with a light amount of... Uh, I don't want to get scattered. No, 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 thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Those mines came in handy. All right. All right. Excellent. Let's just clear out what we can see around here. We did complete the location, right? It's uh, yeah. Okay. So we didn't complete the location. There's not really anything else to necessarily find. There's no particular secrets to be had or anything like that. But you can still check things out and, you know, explore to your leisure. Basically, everything in this environment is going to be randomly generated as opposed to intentionally placed. Those intentionally placed elements, like the now aptly named valuable shipwrecks, go towards that completion total of an area as opposed to just randomly finding loot. These locations are handcrafted. So those secrets are also intentionally placed. All right, I wanna get a little bit more experience before we keep heading over in that direction. So let's find a job or a side mission to grab we haven't gone to a lot of these places, see? So let's um, you know, let's do this. Let's do this uh, item retrieval job right here. That should have looked completely new to folks as well. When you are just flying around in super light, 
Jobs are not possible to find. Um, and Michael is providing a little bit of clarity regarding unique weapons for early access players in Everspace One. This is very, very clear. There was only one item that was exclusive to the Kickstarter backers of Everspace One, and it is the uh, Pulse Laser KS. And it's quite literally just a slight color change to the Pulse Laser. That's it. That's all it is. That's, I mean, there's a, there's subtle other adjustments, like the range is slightly higher, but it's not a game-breaking changer sort of thing. It looks really good alongside the Kickstarter exclusive skin, however, since it's green and then you have a green pulse laser, but I digress. Just a little bit of added clarity there. We are not going to content lock specific items, especially droppables like we're not going to have like certain means like oh well, if you didn't back us then this item will never generate in your game but if you did then that will we are not content gating stuff anywhere close to that the only thing that we are making exclusive is to kickstarters who have backed us at very substantial tiers who deserve that recognition and we're doing so exclusively let's see who's got the goods <clears throat> Some really good questions though. I'm, I'm enjoying the discussions and the conversations going on. You guys are you guys are killing it today. It's pretty awesome. Forgot I had a thermal gun for some reason. Marksman rockets? Alright. do that oh my goodness we also have three mainframe components to combine to a mainframe expansion let's go ahead and reduce this and bump up our expertise for weapon energy consumption to be brought down just a tad more doesn't change too much at the start we don't want the mainframe expansions to be complete game changers for you um, like whenever you're growing through the progression systems but over time if you do take the time to explore and complete various location challenges. Gotcha. And you do a great job searching locations, these handcrafted environments. Then inevitably, right, that's it. <laughs> those mainframe expansions are gonna come in decently useful as they expand those values. The greater and greater, the higher level you go. Grab this container as well. Oh, shipwreck. Oh, two wiring kits. That's that's perfect. That's perfect. We needed one for our tractor beam. Very awesome. See you, folks. Saying it. All I can say is the next time there's a Kickstarter for Airspace Three, I'll be there. Hey, you know what? That's awesome. You know, Airspace Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven, Eight. All of them. Love to have your support. I do wonder how far we'll take the Everspace franchise. It's always, that's always kind of a curious thought. We'll see. Pretty happy with the results of Everspace 2 thus far, and we hope you guys are too. Power cells, okay. I'm thinking that whenever we crack into the questions uh, for this next round, going to be in a little bit, what I'll do is, as I'm answering questions, I'll just go back through those example ships and show them off a little bit more in case anybody missed those or just wants to have another sneak peek. All right. Wait, do we complete this mission? Bring container to blank and outlaw outpost. Andy, I think we might... I think we might need to add one more element to this. I think we maybe didn't finalize this. But, uh, I mean, it, said, it shows it there. Working as intended. It's a little bit of language. Whew.
you never really know what you're gonna get in these dev streams, do ya? We're working on so much stuff and we're excited to like tease you with information and you know, it's, it's not technically a stable build. Ah, it's great. Michael says, I highly doubt I have another Kickstarter in me, to be honest. <laughs> That's fair, actually. That's fair. Yeah, crowdfunding definitely helped us exist. Everspace One would not be alive. Rockfish would not be alive without doing our crowdfunding through Kickstarter. Everspace Two has been a huge boon because of the Kickstarter. So we do appreciate everyone's support on that front. Here's hoping that future projects will be entirely self-funded. And then maybe we can make DLC for content supported packages or something like that, I don't know, whatever. That's that's way out there, guys. Let's, uh, there's not even reason to speculate. Why would I bring that up? Oh, that's a new, uh, that's a new enemy. That's exciting. That's Christian, you told me those don't unlock until uh, level 10 or so. Guess we'll have another look at that teleport drum. Those things are nasty. This was not technically part of the reveals today, but uh, we're here, we're right now, it's fine, it's great. Let's look at this outlaw teleport drone a little bit more. Where are you are, right there, all right. So let's just go have a quick gander at him. It is a completely new model, something to be you know, somewhat excited for, I suppose. A new drone type being used by the Outlaws. This is the Outlaw Teleport Drone. What does it do? You might ask. Well, let's see if we can survive a little bit longer this time. Oh my gosh, or maybe not. Let's see if we can clear out some of these foes. Oh gosh, I think we are, I think we are goner. There's too many, yeah, there's too much in the, this area. They are. Higher level, and we are not prepared for this. Uh, not prepared for this. Just keep coming. That's a really good example of what it does, though. Um, so that's a benefit. So basically, the outlaw uh, teleport drone moves you around. It messes with you. Sound. And it can be beneficial to you if you are in the right space, or it can be absolutely horrendous. The best way to deal with the teleport drone is by eliminating it as quickly as possible. Let's try this one more time. Yeah, I think this out outpost is just gonna be a little too, little too much for us. Wow. Let's, let's, let's leave. <laughs> Woo! That is a nasty area. Yeah, I mean, the ult would help. You're, you're right. I'm, I'm looking over at the chat. But just seeing how many sniper drones are there in conjunction to our level, as well as, I mean, shoot, look at our equipment. We got, we still have some level ones and twos. We got to refine ourselves a little bit more before we're going to go up against something like that. So we don't have to drop the job, but we do need to explore some other locations first. The undead ship should be relatively easy to pull off and give us a nice little net gain of experience. So let's do that. Let's do that. There is not a black hole in the background. If you think you see one, it is, it's, it's not a black hole. <laughs> there are, there's a planet. Black holes did exist in Everspace One. They are not 100% something that's gonna be available uh, for Everspace Two in terms of the gameplay experience, probably. But we can hope, you can be hopeful, we'll see. Environmental effects, uh, I mean, we're not strangers to them. Missing a distress call, yeah, goodness. Sorry, Wild Charger. Do you want me to go back? Is that? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this must be the freighter mentioned in the log 
entry. Now, as of right now, because we picked up this undead ship, Dang it. All right. <laughs> uh, but this is a level two mission. This mission will remain at level two for the entire game until specific events occur. Damn. So we could technically just not do this and wait until we reach another part in the game and then it will level up and the rewards from this mission would in fact increase as well. But I'm looking to just get a little more experience, and this is going to be like easy mode, and that's that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to do it. I just have to remember how to, to enter this place. There it is. The ramp dates back to the war. How can it still have so much power? Whatever they fed the generator, it's still pumping. Oh, come here, come here. Go away. Thank you. <clears throat> Alright. Where were we? Power core dispensers. Anytime you see an unstable power core, it's explosive. Which means if you do something silly like ram into a wall, it will explode. These are different from standard power cores, which do not explode and generally have a specific socket you need to be plugging them into. All right, we got a Marksman Umbra and an, ooh, all right, that's, I like, I like that. We're just gonna dismantle the other one. Yeah, I agree, that feels good. Level up. All right, that feels feels good. That means we can start making more progress. I'm a little nervous to going back to that level seven location. <laughs> Explanation unclear about the unstable powers. Uh, let's stop at Union Bridge here for some repairs. Gosh, that's so weird. I almost never stop for repairs. I could use my nanobots, but eh. do we have more? No, we only have the two. I want to hang on to those for the, in the moment. Hell of a setup they have here. Whew. Somehow I missed the warp gate off in the distance. <laughs> More experience and credits. Oh, that's nice. That's actually, that's good. That's good. All right. All right, we're gonna dock at this base. I'm gonna repair. We're gonna save. I'm gonna answer some more questions. And while I'm doing so, we're gonna highlight some more of those beautiful ships. Cycle back around. It should be nice. So, what can I do for you? Yeah. Repairing the ship. Gonna save. Geek bite. Let's go ahead and start answering some questions. Right, we have a question from Flory on Twitch. Um, will the save styles stay at five or will we get more? Oh, the styles, The there's the original yeah. style and then there's the four custom styles. Now remember the four yeah. custom styles are for each ship. It's not for all of your ships. So I know that sometimes that can feel a little bit, um, <clears throat> gotta be careful here because I can't show you all the things yet. But um, for each one of these, each one of these, this is bound to this particular ship. When you purchase a new one, it does carry over the styles you had from the last ship to the new one. However, they're completely separate from each other. So if you take your second ship and you completely change around the styles that you had for each of your vessels, and look at those beautiful wings, right? 
Look at those beautiful wings. Um, if you completely change around the styles for your second ship and then you go back to your first one, you didn't just update the styles for your first ship either because they're gonna remain that same four different custom styles that you have. Now, there's also space down here, okay? It almost looks like it's completely uh, um, missing something. <laughs> uh, I, I, actually, I shouldn't tease that because we're not 100% sure how that's going to be finalized, but it is likely that we are going to have a little bit of a transformation on this front. So we'll see what happens. We are very happy with having four specific custom slots for each ship. So do know that. It's not likely we'll have more custom style slots, but we'll see. All right, next question, please. Uh, Random over on YouTube would like to know, will there be a colorless transparent window tint among the new window colors? You know, that is an interesting request. You'll just have to wait out and see what color options that we have for you. We, uh, we don't want to have anything that looks off-putting or weird. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the, that's the best I can answer. I know it's kind of like a, he didn't answer the question, so I can be hopeful. You can be hopeful. Um, but yeah, can't can't really get too de more descriptive than that. <laughs> Excellent, right. Some questions are coming in thinking fast all of a sudden. Everybody's thinking all of a sudden. <laughs> of course, of course. Right, Super Scrapper on Twitch is after. Is there any way to implement some kind of priority targeting system where the ship always targets specific enemies first? Uh, also, is there any way of doing target the closest enemy? There is a way to target closest enemy. It is not bound by default. Um, <clears throat> you have options here, right here, where you have the lock target, lock closest target, lock next on-screen enemy, lock previous on-screen enemy, lock next previous on-screen enemy access. Um, lots of different options that you can kind of customize and mess around with to get to your liking on that front. Cause we've had a lot of people um, asking about this. It is not something that we are going to enable by default. This is in the similar vein of the inertial dampeners. We have a particular way that we want the game to be played, especially for the controller, okay? So if you want to mix things up and go your own direction though, that's where that you can find those particular elements. Uh, the first part of that question, read it one more time. Cause I think this, there's a difference between that part and this. It's the Geekbyte, if you could read the start of that question one more time. Uh, is there any way to implement some kind of priority targeting system? Okay. Where the ship yeah, always so, targets so, specific enemy types. Right, so you're wanting specific enemy types selected. We we don't have that functionality and that's not planned. Um, that's a, that is a clever idea, but that is not, uh, that is not one that we have planned uh, to add in here. But we do have these options for the closest target, next on screen, previous on screen, and next on screen enemy access. <clears throat> have another question and this time from youtube uh, from fins okay we hear black holes are not a promise but are there any plans considerations about white holes i.e object repulsing big white thingies that was verbatim that was <laughs> oh yeah i got you yeah i know i mean we are definitely familiar with white holes as well but i think that if we went in the direction of white holes then it would start we'd, we'd start having individuals kind of go well wait they have white holes so where are the black holes it's it's one of those things where it would be hard to go in one direction and not the other one. And I think jumping to white holes is a little bit too far of a leap in this particular case. If we were to go into an environmental direction, the black hole would absolutely be first, I feel, uh, with a possible white hole situation beyond that, should the prior be satisfied. But again, this is environmental uh, uh, danger elements stuff, which is currently, I mean, it's not planned okay guys it's, it's this is not something that we are uh really wanting to crack into and doing too much we're very happy with the results of the handcrafted environment so i want that expectation to come back down <laughs> i know you had that in everspace one but this is a different genre there's different elements uh bringing it all together uh and we are moving away from certain directions so 
let's let's hone that in just a little bit. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Excellent. Right. Uh, Bill Farson has asked a question. I think we've touched on it before uh, regarding the codex for Everspace 2. Now, I know there has been some changes, so maybe some people have missed uh, the changes that we've got. Uh, if you could show that. Yeah, so we cleaned up the codex uh, in a way to where we now have four slots consolidated information. This does not mean we took those four slots that were there previously and said, screw you, get out of here, get lost. No, 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 we took that and we consolidated it down. We felt that looking at the screen with too many buttons was uh, not, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't pleasant. It was not delightful. And um, even though this also wasn't something I was technically going to show, I am gonna go ahead and click on this guides and tutorials just to give you a little bit of a taste as to how this is being composed. This is completely work in progress. I just want you to show, I just wanna show this so that you can kind of get a little bit of a sense of it. And of course I'm showing you the most basic one that you probably know what it looks like already, but still it's something, okay? Be happy, I love you. So when you go into something like this, you see all of those tool tips that you received through the guides and tutorials once again, you get the image, you get the information. So if you had like accidentally clicked on something and you just completely bypassed it, you can find all of that here. It says 11 out of 11. That could change, okay? Just letting you all know that. For this other stuff, I'm not getting into it. I'm not opening it. Please don't ask, not gonna happen. But again, we do want to provide all of that rich, beautiful information and detail into this world that we have created. Uh, in a somewhat similar way that you see from the Everspace One Codex. This uh, is technically not, play I don't think we've actually officially said we are doing the Codex, even though I'm clearly showing you. Because um, the last time we had a, a chat uh, in this live stream, sincerely, we, uh, we had to say that we, it was probably not going to happen. Um, obviously some things have changed, so. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to deliver a codex to you all with some nice information to bring all that rich lore together. Excellent, indeed. Um, would you be able to show some more of the customization again? Because um, I think some people um, have just dropped in. Not oh. on these particular ships uh, because it has all the work in progress stuff, but I am happy to go back to my very limited save file that can show you just like the basics of what things look like yeah um People otherwise i am Amazon. yeah I, i'm otherwise i am flying with some customized styles here to, so you can kind of see uh new engines and, and cockpits uh, in conjunction with uh themed styles the uh, themed being that they are reminiscent of the everspace one ship skins through the dlc i'm just getting a little bit of a glance at that next question please Excellent. Uh, Shreem on Twitch uh, is asking a bit of a technical question to go regarding the Sentinel's ultimate. Uh, does the Sentinel's ultimate damage scale based off the weapon equipped, or does it do flat energy kinetic damage? Read that question one more time. <laughs> I want to make sure that I heard that correctly. Uh, yeah. the, the, does the Sentinel's ultimate damage scale based off the weapon equipped, or does it do a flat energy kinetic damage? It's flat. Yeah, flat. it's flat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a blank yeah, expression. Oh my gosh. There, okay. there are certain, there's, there's like some particular rules inside of the game that like we had to like make some decisive directions as to what's kind of benefiting other values and what's not. Because some of those values that do enhance others completely break the game. And in the realm of ultimates, we have to be very careful. In fact, if you've been a part of the early access ride, you'll know that we used to have some rather broken ultimates because of values being included, as well as other problems like the ability to chain them into themselves. But I digress. So yeah, that is a flat damage. Yes. Oh man, I like this engine combination personally. I, I like this Ooh, one a that, lot, this ship. So. That is nice. Next question. Right, uh, T3 Cube has asked, uh, and Michael has responded to this one directly, so I'll, I'll read that as well. Uh, looking into the final stretch, are movable ship parts on the horizon anywhere, or is it not even on the list of nice to have due to the time evolved to create animations for each model? Uh, Michael did say, it's not happening due to our modular player ship design. Having animations would be a pain for very uh, various technical reasons. Yeah, yep. and that's that. Yep. yep. 
That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Can't say further than that. Right, last question for the time being from Wizard Jerry over on YouTube. Uh, about the ship module's customization in 1.0, if I'm piloting a tier 4 ship, will it be possible if I can change my wings to a tier 2 style? Can we can we tell him, Michael? I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, look, look. So if Michael answers, awesome. If not, uh, just know that we want you guys to have the styles that you want in your ships, right? Like this is kind of your non-answer here. Um, you know, we've talked about this transmog and the enjoyment factor thereof. And if you really like a certain wing type, then, you know, we want to do our best to allow you to have access into that. So um, it's a possibility, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh and tiptoeing around rules fun oh goodness we'll share more about transmogging closer to the 1.0 release thank you for your feedback it is very important to us <laughs> beautiful it's a great question. It's a great question. I really like these engines, by the way. The the green and the light comes together so well. Ugh. And uh, also, through all of this, I, I want to give a massive shout out to Marco, by the way. He is one of our lead technical uh, designer, engineer, developer. What is his official title? Dang it. He's just, he's a wizard. Okay. That's honestly what it comes down to. And when he came up with a lot of the, just the demonstration colors of what I'm showing you today, he literally just went and was like, okay, I'm just gonna pick some random stuff and just threw his his massive brain over there. I was just like, all right, color selection, this works, this works, this works, bam, bam, boot, bada, beam. And just knocked it out of the park with just examples, examples of colors. It's a good chance most of these will be approved and in the game. But what you are technically seeing is placeholder it's work in progress so pretty awesome lead artist oh my gosh <laughs> guys i know the team super well wow that's embarrassing <laughs> thank you for that correction michael i'll make sure that i apologize to marco after the stream all right <clears throat> let's um let's get back to the save that was the last question right last question it was indeed yeah fine. okay so I lied. I don't want to get back into the save. I want to crack into some community-centric stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do in order to finalize one of the questions, which was just seeing the customization within the game, I'm going to show this really quick. And then I'm going to go in that direction. We're going to focus in on the community. So as a follow-up to that question pertaining to like what this customization looks like now, you can kind of see how things have been adjusted a little bit. And also, whenever you are navigating your emissive lights, the color surrounding the ship falls so that you can have a better sense of where those emissives are coming from. Obviously, lesser tiered ships like tier ones don't have as many emissives coming off of them. And that only increases with more. <clears throat> and then uh, window tints. We have two starting colors. We have the standard baby blue, as well as the notoriously titled yellow one. Those are your two options to start. And then engine colors, you'll be able, also light dims here so you can see where those are coming from. And it does toggle the engines on so you can get a sense of how it looks. You'll be able to adjust your main engine colors. Normally the main uh, thruster is uh, orange and the main boost is blue. Let's cycle those around. I think I said I was gonna do that and then I forgot to. And then you can also change your lateral thrusters. Those are the tiny lights whenever you are adjusting up, down, left, right. You can change that. And there will be a pool of colors that all three of these are modified from, similarly to how all three of these are modified from the same pool of colors as well. All right, so that's, that's the follow-up on that front. Hopefully that satisfies the question. So yeah, we're gonna take a real quick break then when I come back, we're gonna dive into some community elements. The big thing that I truly wanna talk about is the racing challenge. Oh my gosh. Um, it should be fun, it should be fun. So stick around, you don't wanna miss it. It's uh, rather impressive, I would say. One second, one second.
Oh, oh goodness gravy. I am back getting situated real quick. Please take note of all the scrolling things on the screen. Most noteworthy ones, we are, we are pretty active over on the Discord and we are starting new Discord events so you guys know when things are going on. Definitely encourage you to join the fun over there. We will be doing more community contests and uh, highlighting folks and all that fun stuff. Should be a good old time. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do something real quick, which is basically jump to this screen. Hello, hello, perfect. So hopefully everything you can see here is is clear. If not, we'll zoom in a little bit. But these are the official racing results for the recent community challenge. What we did is for the last two weeks, we've had it to where you go racing and whoever had the fastest time following very specific rules, which were you had to race within the latest version of Everspace 2. You had to submit them um, on the Discord with the screenshot and then send me your save files and you could use devices or any other shenanigans so long as it was not a gimmick or an exploit. Those were the big three rules surrounding the whole uh, elements. We had a fight at the finish. I think it was about uh, maybe an hour or two uh, at the conclusion of the whole thing. And Chadawi snuck in for a tremendous number of steals here, which just gonna zoom in here, you can see. But man, I tell you what, we had, we had six individuals who were up for the race. Six individuals out of the whole community was not uh, as large of a response as I was personally hoping for, but you know what? Thank you to those six. In fact, because there were so few of you, I have granted all of you the ace pilot role if you didn't have it. So yeah, there you go. You are ace pilots because of your participation in this particular challenge. Thank you for that. Here you can see Scrap Race, Chad Wee sneaking in these times. Again, these were right at the end where we were singing uh, some of some really healthy competition between Finns and Random. We also saw some competition from, uh, was it Wizard Jerry, I think also plugged in a little bit. Uh, Crispy Muffin also. You can see the whole uh, details down here at the base where Chattawee had nine first places and one second place. We had Finns with six second places and four third places. Random snuck in another one of those first places he had three second places and six third places crispy muffin was behind him wizard jerry not too far behind we had some really healthy competition back there and human aimbot he gave it his all he was the first one to submit times what an absolute legend really do appreciate your contribution seriously super fantastic now you're looking at some of these times and some of them are rather tight some of them are rather close to one another and some you're just like wait a second what how in the world can there be that much of a discrepancy? You look at border crossing and this thing was, this thing was crazy. We got random at 12 seconds. We have Chattawee with a little bit of a couple extra tenths of a second and then Finn's even a couple more. Like we had, it was nuts. It was nuts. And through the evaluation of these, you know, we had to make sure that everything was all fine and fair and dandy. So I do want to show you some videos that Chattawee handed off to me and he said it was totally okay for me to share with this particular audience. Now, keep in mind, this is actually private videos of his ownership. I'm showing you on his behest and on his approvals. Okay, just giving that sort of legal information out. And uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> jumping over here to this screen so that you can see as much of the glory as possible. And without further ado, let's crack into, uh, whoops, let's crack into, scrap race and um i'm gonna just kind of i'm gonna remove my face i want you guys to get the full effect i want you guys to get the full effect this is nuts all right here we go chadawi scrap race our contestant is straight out of the starting point bon chance
man. <laughs> so it turns out handling is a rather important trait when it comes to racing. Ooh, wanna see some more? I've got some more to show. Cause that was the first out of nine of his first places. And I also want to point out that Random still kept a first place victory, okay? This is just one way to go about these races. Let's get into some more. I'm just gonna vanish my face, we're gonna keep going. High voltage. Oh my gosh. And here he goes, flying like an eagle, but in space, a space eagle. Freaking Maurice barely had a chance to finish his comet before the race concluded. He doesn't have any energy injectors. He's not using them. He doesn't need them. Okay, guys, just let's keep let's keep going. Chatoui, you're ridiculous. Fantastic use of the rules. Oh my gosh. Racing from the dead. Check this one out. Keep going, loophole, loophole, here we go. Oh my gosh. Just, oh my gosh. I, I, the fact that he like even tops it off with that teleport at the end, what a cheeky way of saying, yeah, I still got this. You think I'm gonna go slow? Nah, I'm maximizing this sucker. Like what, what an impressive use of devices to capitalize on these races. Underground Raceway. This one, this, I particularly enjoy this one. Here we go. Yeah, lots of practice. You can even see in the upper right, like his previous records, like you could tell that he was going through these races multiple times, trying to, to finalize them. All of these races that you are watching here, Every single one is from a new save after the latest update, okay? So there's zero ability to even freaking tamper on these things. There's no pr prior save data that's being pulled over. So here's a fun one. This one, border crossing. This one is actually, uh, he did not have first place here. This is second place, but he's still using the same techniques. This is just one way to go about these techniques, but random, was actually faster than this. Not by much, but just enough. Random was faster than that. Crazy. Crazy. So just seeing this level of skill reach fruition using those devices and you know, it's, it's nuts. Let's keep going. We got, uh, let's see, race to rock bottom here. Oh goodness. Absolutely wild. Oh, I see somebody commenting about the circle. He didn't go through the circle, but it registered. Yeah, there's a there's a unique hitbox there that has been employed through various techniques through our racing sort of challenges. Or a gosh dang it, that's so fast. Akarat roller coaster. Let's keep going. And he's all, look at him going all his. That glory. that cheeky teleport. Oh gosh. Imagine official racing tournaments after release. That would be exciting. Yeah, for all three people who'd want to do it. <laughs> oh man, goodness! If we if we could put emphasis into our racing to where we could get like a, a racing following surrounding it, that I no doubt would be amazing. But it's just it's not. It was never the plan. It was never the plan. And the fact that gosh, dang it, of course, Carnage this is also beautiful. The fact that we're seeing this level of skill in this side mission that we've been able to produce. I mean, thank you so much for everyone with your dedication to this. Holy crap, like. 
Wow. Oh my gosh. But man, <clears throat> whoo, absolutely nuts. All right, last one. This is Hellride. This is Hellride. And again, everything that you've seen here, okay? Everything that you've seen, there's no time foolery afoot. You can see for yourself, he's using that fusion hook. He's using expert controls, using the handling of the Vanguard, which has the best handling. Oh my gosh. Just maximizing that use of skill, pounding away. And some of those times they were pretty close to other people employing different tactics. It's incredible to see how everyone was diving in. Let's get into Hellride here. Let's get into Hellride. Oh my goodness. you guys but like this race in and of itself it's such a it's a test of patience and the fact that he's blowing through this with these very specific moments of device use because he's got to make sure he's got that to use again right he's got to make sure it's charged he's not using any device charging consumables imagine what you could do if you paired it with that The fact that this is not a fully optimized race. <laughs> that ending though, that's, that's questionable. Bouncing off the finish gate there, hmm, I don't know about that. <laughs> Shoot, man. I think on, on that last race, he beat my record by, I don't know, say something like a minute. Oh gosh. <laughs> Absolutely wild, absolutely crazy. So um, just a massive shout out sincerely um, to Chatoui. He has absolutely earned the bragging rights. Um, insane. I do also want to give an appropriate shout out once again for all of our other racers. Seriously, every single one of you, you took great care and attention and approaching those races and you rocked it. No matter what your style was, no matter what your skill level is at, the fact that you came up and sent those submissions, you were like, dang it, I'm gonna do this. I don't care what other people are gonna think of me. I'm gonna have some fun doing it. You are rock stars in my book. Thank you so much. And the skill employed through, like, especially our top three, Random, Fins, Chatoui, Sincerely, you guys know what you're doing. I know that you could optimize more. I know that you can employ some incredibly cool new tricks along the way. And I do hope to see that in the future. This was incredibly enjoyable to watch. And I do think that we'll have more community challenges in a similar vein as this. For now, let's go ahead and jump over to the fan art section. First, we got some pixel art that was made from the Chemical Bro after some pixel art. The Rockfish logo that we saw last week uh, was done. So it's, uh, it's interesting. It's always kind of weird looking at your own face, I feel like. So, you know, it's, it's it's nice, it's fine. We got Geometry Prime over here, showing this reflecting panel and some laser beams bouncing off of it. It's pretty cool. I should also slow down for a moment and allow Geekbyte, if you would like, to jump in and send us some questions while we are highlighting these screenshots from the community. I Woo! would if I had any, but people are just as oh, gobsmacked with those times, honest, to be fair. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised, honestly. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> they haven't got over that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. So, uh, very, very good. Oh, so yeah, it's the, the racing was absolutely wild. Like whenever I had, I was speaking to him on the side cause obviously I needed to, you know, ensure that there was no tampering. Cause why would we have a challenge that was competitive that didn't do that? That would be kind of ridiculous. Um, you know, 
he just casually sent them. He's like, oh, here's, here's the content that you're looking for. No big deal. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> but just sincerely, um, yeah, very, very impressed. I just remember watching the first video and my, just, my, my jaw just dropped to the floor. I love it. I love it. And I do hope that those videos that I showed that revealed his techniques inspires some of you out there that have that competitive spirit. Because I do know that there are some very skillful pilots out there who could do better. That's right, I said it. I know that you could. If you really devote the time and the energy to it, it could be amazing. Make sure you record it if you do. I don't care if we're doing a challenge or not. Showing that crap on the Discord is gonna get highlighted. I don't care. Amazing, amazing. All right, let's go, let's go over to our next screenshot. And as I'm going through these screenshots that I'm sharing from the community, these all came from the Discord from last week to this week. Uh, feel free to go ahead and ask any questions that you guys have, uh, formulate some discussions. We can also revisit ship colors if we have enough time, possibly, <clears throat> maybe. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep going on that front. What a pleasant photo from Flory. I don't know if Flory was intending this to be just like a super chill photo or not, but it has captured all the elements of calming down and cooling one's jets after a ridiculous racing session, I suppose. Environmental shots, they... I, I seriously just want to slap so many of these up on my wall. It's crazy because like... Yeah, there's super cool explosions and spaceship models and blah, 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 this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, I mean, our team's done a fantastic job, whatever. But the environmental design, <laughs> like I just, I love being invested in this world space that's been created. Just, I, I just wanna go explore in it. And I think that this shot by Flory has captured the home base territory incredibly well on that front. Just begs me to go in there and find the things that are hiding feels really good. Mm. All right. Yeah, that's definitely a background screenshot for sure. Absolutely. The number of screenshots that I have taken from you guys, I, I should probably clear out my folder. I think it's, it's, I don't think it's at a terabyte yet, but it's, it, there's, a, there's a lot in it. Woo. All right. <clears throat> Next photo we got from Bill Farson, who was having a bit of fun uh, with Lining up his sh ship in various shots, and uh, that's clever. That's clever. I like that. Boop in the nose. Speaking or... of Bill Farson, yep. we've actually got a question from him. Oh, perfect. Well, let's have the question <laughs> yeah. from Bill Farson as we're looking at Bill Farson's chart. Let's do it. Uh, on the map, he noticed some planet names, and he's asking what they are. Kosh, Okosh, and Mokosh. Uh, yeah, so we are, there are going to be a couple more adjustments, improvements, and additions to the map, um, which you may or may not have caught. I wasn't probably being as careful as I should have been when I was on that screen, but, um, Oops. yeah, there's just more stuff on that front. I mean, it's not, it's nothing too crazy revealing, Michael, please don't fire me. It's, it's more just along the lines of, you know, there's going to be more. Like, we, we have this expansive world, and yeah, the planets do, in fact, have names. Like, it's been, uh... It's been explored by deep space uh, colonials way back before the wars. And through that exploration and naming conventions and everything, they butted up against the Okar, who also have their naming conventions for certain territories. And, you know, after the treaties were made, you know, it's it's been a very long time in this space in the DMZ. And there's a lot of stuff that has been explored and uh, appropriately named accordingly. So there's also some territories that are still left unexplored or intentionally left unexplored as well. Maybe we'll run into some of those. I don't know. That's great. <laughs> but with all sincerity, I mean, yeah, there's more stuff on the map. Names, all that stuff. You'll get more of that delicious lore when it's done. Honestly, it's when it all comes together. Excellent. Next shot comes from Dawn of Will. I'm trying to remember the naming convention he applied to this one. But the long and the short of it is that that drone carrier was very brave <laughs> sneaking into that pipe and then performing that maneuver. This reminds me of that scene in Austin Powers. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Try to turn that completely. The golf cart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what this reminds me of, that drone carrier. It's all automated, right? So it's just like trying to like slowly turn around or so. Oh my gosh great capture i love it i dig it wonderful shot donovan i approve <laughs> very 
very nice. And in the end, gets stuck. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or in the case of this one, in the end, just gets blown the heck up because it can't get out of there. Oh my gosh. All right. This next shot comes from Wild Charger, which we've had some uh, we've had some, uh, some questions from, I think, in the chat. Yes, uh, had some conversation at least. And this comes from Everspace One. Um, and I love the way that this creature, this is in fact a creature, looks whenever you're just examining the space that it's surrounding. This is a, it's like an ice crystal creeper. I can't remember the official naming conventions we have, but it is in fact a living entity that infests inside of certain materials. And in this case, it is ice droids. There are a certain number of them that you can find in the randomly generated uh, spaces of Everspace One, and you have to scan them for Maester Throng for a side mission that he puts you on. So pretty, pretty neat, pretty fun. <clears throat> Otherwise, I do like the composition as a whole. It's just, it's very pleasant. Very pleasant, good framing stuff. We got this shot from Kazaa, which is a more recent one, and Dang, man, sick bling. What in the world? I uh, I remember a long, long time ago where I was decking out certain ship designs where I had like the um, Silver Scout, the Golden Gunship, the, what else did I have? Oh my gosh. Amethyst Interceptor. It's, it's been so long, but man, this like takes me back and it looks sick dude that's awesome i don't even know if that's actually gold i think that's just white but there's so many of these missiles that are flying by with that yellow glow it makes it look gold that's awesome that's really cool maybe it was the scarlet scout i can't remember spoon I, I think you're right though i think you're right i had a lot of fun with creating those different uh styles and looks but yeah that that is a very smooth looking ship like that's that looks like a um that looks like the ship of like a royalty <laughs> right there if that's that's weird to say but comes across very clean nice shot very nice shot and then we have oh i see i actually see a, a question i want to answer this really quick from junior pan pan panciotti i'm probably mispronouncing that but it's why don't you get any loot from destroying an okar frigate um, there aren't frigates in Everspace 2, and you should absolutely be getting loot from Okar frigates in Everspace 1. That being said, if you're referring to the Okar in general within Everspace 2, it is because we do not want to have them be farmable, because they're meant to be the protectors in the territories of the DMZ. So if you were just constantly engaging them and destroying them, and then more were warping in, you'd effectively be able to endlessly collect loot. And our solution to working around that was disabling the loot drops that's that's really what it comes down to so yeah that's all that's all next shot comes from don of will i think there he was kind of going through a different number of shots pertaining to like bombing runs maybe and man just looking at this shot it, it makes me oh i'm so excited for when you do inevitably get your hands on more ship customization because i know it's, it's gonna go through the roof and all of these customized shots and the glows and oh I'm already, I'm already envisioning it, even though we are, uh, you know, still got some time in this home stretch. But my goodness, definitely enjoying the way that he's coming down and just the destruction, that thorough destruction of this base looks good. This is a preset ship. It's clean. I like it. I do like seeing your customized ships, however, much like this one that's provided by Random. In fact, this is the racing striker that Random used to grab that number one trophy, as well as a slew of the other trophies that he had collected, the several uh, second and multiple thirds. And yeah, this is the way that he stylized it. Lots of yellow glows from those emissives. Nice, clean, red, white, blue colorations, bringing it all together good stuff I'm not missing any questions am I I'm just I'm looking over and I'm 
And seeing some discussions like uh, no, no, no questions okay, are coming all right, in. <laughs> all right, all right, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to ask the, the various chats actually with the customizations that they've seen and obviously the potential for yeah. transmogrification coming up. How many hours do they think they're going to spend colorizing and swapping out ship parts? Guys, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys have like. There, there are so many different mindsets when you're playing video games, right? For for me, I'm one of those guys. Whenever I'm diving into an RPG, it's like you have the character creator. I will spend half of my total time with the entire game in the character creator versus the time that I spend playing the game. Like at the end of the, the end of all of being said and done, I'll have created thousands of characters in all these varied ways. And then I'll have played the game successfully through like five of those characters. <laughs> that's just what I do. I love character creation. And so for me, that's gonna be a no brainer. But yeah, I mean, it's, I'm curious how you guys are gonna like enter into that. I can I foresee a lot of time and dedication to going into these details, especially when we have more to talk about. And it's it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. This shot, by the way, comes from Kazaa, and I don't think this one was employing any sort of adjustments. I think this is a natural shot inside using the um uh, the the time the 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 time magnification effects if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Kaza? Or did you touch this up a little bit? Either way, I'm, just, I, I'm, just, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna be upset with you. I think it's a fantastic shot. I love the way that you've neutralized the colors and the contrast is very pleasant here. It's very good. A uh, quick question from Bill Farson. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Is there any plans to make uh, a video or something which will show the cutscenes of the colonial Okao War or lore in detail? That could be kind of fun, but we do have that represented partially in Everspace One already. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's not necessarily any plans to do that. Um, but even still, my my answering of that, saying there's not really any plans, that's already kind of giving you too much information. If I'm being completely honest, all right? Because there's a lot of elements of the lore that we haven't quite revealed yet, and the world building is still gonna be expanded even further. You're gonna see some of those elements within the codex. You're gonna see some very strong referential and in some cases probably like direct information that you would have read from Everspace 1 pulled over into Everspace 2 uh, because we want everything to be that cohesive whole. Everything's in that world existing together. We don't want there to be any wonky sort of, well, this happened in Everspace 1, so why is it like that in Everspace 2? Like, we we do have a lot of ex uh, lore explanations as to how all of that's bridging over and pertaining to the Okar colonial conflict and how all that stuff went down and the referencing back. We do feel that it was very appropriate how we've done that through the Everspace 1 uh, clone thoughts of his clone father. Spoiler. And there's not necessarily a need to revisit that in Everspace 2 based on its particular story. So if you want the whole gambit of the story and the world and the characters and everything that's gone on in the Everspace universe, I mean, I implore you to purchase Everspace One and the DLC to get as much of it as you possibly can. Um, otherwise, the uh, main focal points of the story, the lore, the world, all that type of stuff in Everspace Two, it's a continuation thereof, but it's going to bridge into new territories, into new uh, unfolding events and actions. So, yeah, that was a lot. That was a sh that was tons of information. So, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and yeah, there you go. There you go. I also think that there's been a pretty good job of a timeline creation by Grindle, who is our wiki mastermind, effectively, over on the Everspace Wiki. There's a there's a timeline of events that you can sneak into there. And the last time I checked it, it was so accurate. I may even have brought the attention of it to the team to ensure that it was not going to accidentally get uh, adjusted or changed or misaligned with the events of Everspace 2. So kudos to you, Grindle, for keeping us in check. Wonderful. All right, well, this was the last photo that I did have, by the way. So we ended up having a little bit of time left. Um, but I do think there's a couple other little details that I can kind of point out. Um, just because we started it with the, the opening of the stream, I had kind of gone through and said, hey, you know, we got some sort of these logistical things 
you've probably noticed some moves on the PR side of Rockfish, okay? And we have had a couple of wonderful new directions that have pushed us into new opportunities, and we want to make sure that you guys are in the loop of all of that. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you all of our plans because I can't, that would be rather dumb of me to do. But what I can tell you is that elements like Discord events, we are going to be capitalizing on. So you are in the know of when we are establishing key moments and reveals and all of those elements so that you can get to that information as soon as possible. What that means for you is that it's no longer gonna be like these shadow drop moments where you weren't anticipating anything and all of a sudden, oh, I okay, I, I missed it and now it's here. It's much more gonna be in the line of saying, instead of an announcement for an announcement, it's gonna be, hey, we have an announcement at this time, come join us. That's what it's gonna look like, all right? So we will have a pretty, pretty decent amount of information to share with you soon. I know a lot of you guys are anticipating a trailer, for example, uh, based on some information that we shared. Was it Monday? I think it was Monday. We, we had that little teaser of the beginning of the trailer. And we've also mentioned that, you know, we will have a release date soon. And through that, we said that we've been in development for five years, early access two years, and then we will be sharing that release date information in the trailer in a week. So a week, it was posted on Monday. That means next week. That's, that's how that works, right? That's how that works. Dex, that body we just found, when I saw it, it felt like that was still me in there. So yeah, I hope that you're looking forward to it. Should be a good discussion. Good time to chat about things. So, When the stream does conclude here today, I will be making a Discord event that tells you the exact time we will be delivering this trailer. Cool. So you won't miss it. The second it goes live, you will know about it. You'll be able to dive in. We're going to have a really good time together. Um, I'm thinking about maybe it's... it's, it's I might join like a, a Discord chat session, maybe. Don't know if that's gonna be the best thing that's gonna work out. But um, you know, either way, we will be in the Discord. We'll be able to chat with you guys uh, whenever all the stuff's happen, uh, per usual, of course. And uh, otherwise, we are really looking forward to sharing a lot of information with you and helping you reach this 1.0 adventure through your fantastic feedback and support. It's been such a wild ride and Oh my gosh, goodness gravy. <laughs> it's uh, dang near emotional, so shoot. Man, I guess, I guess I started the community segment a little too early. Oh my gosh, we have like nine minutes left, but all the more reason to engage with you, answer your questions and hang out. Guys, did you, did you have some questions? You wanna see anything specific? I can, I can roll back the tapes. We can, we can have a jolly old time here. We got eight solid minutes together. How, how are you doing? How'd the cutscene and VO work progressing? Oh, it's going great. It's going great, Alien Pickle. It really is. The, the cutscenes have been getting a lot of improvements and tweaks and modifications. The VO's really been coming together. Um, and that also includes like the German VO. We will have both English and German voiceover for the entirety of the game. Localization, uh, goodness great of the it's, yeah, it's, it really is coming together. We're really happy with how the cutscenes are being employed and, and handled, um, as well as, a, a, as well as, as new things. <laughs> so as well as the more. So very, very good stuff. <clears throat> what day is Monday on the rockfish calendar versus the earth calendar? Oh my gosh. It's, it's Monday guys. It's not, this, this is not an illusion. Three more days. <laughs> you guys. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. My throat has been awful the last several weeks. <laughs> but you know what? I persevere. I've been pounding this, uh, what's it called? It's, uh, hang on a second. Let me read this. It's called Traditional Medicinals. Oh, it's not listed on here. It's like a, a throat coat sort of thing. It's kind of like tea, except it tastes like garbage. But <laughs> it helps your throat. It helps you be able to talk and... It's, oh yeah, invisible cup, I think it's green. Yeah, cheers. 
very good. <laughs> that is good. Is it going to be a premiere? No, uh, Sniper in LN. I love, I love that thought. It is not going to be a premiere. So, um, but that, that that might be something we do in the future. Might. Can't guarantee it. We do have very specific processes that we handle internally with Rockfish, and we don't want to jump the gun on any elements that don't need to be or would put us in a pickle. That wouldn't make any sense. So this is kind of like a slow movement into making you guys even more informed and bringing you into this space of knowing when things are happening. So it's exciting. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's pretty good. So yeah. <clears throat> Seeing a couple more questions. How is the atmosphere in the studio? Is everyone nervous? Last minute crunch, etc. We don't crunch at Rockfish, uh, Pellinth. We, we really don't. Like I'm saying that sincerely, like, yes, we have a lot of tasks that we still need to do. We do sincerely. Um, and we're working on as many as we can. There are, this is like that element of like, what has to happen by 1.0. It's going to make it obviously like promises, for example, then we also have those things that would be nice to have. And then there's those things that we do have to drop. Maybe they'll come back in a DLC. Maybe not. Just, there's a lot that has to uh, come into play there, but we are not going to drive our employees into the ground and say, no, you can't hang out with your children, come into work, damn it, and finish this concept. No, that's, that's not, that's not gonna happen. That's not how we work. That is not how we work. So, um, yeah. In fact, if, <laughs> if Michael knew how much my throat's been in pain the last couple of weeks, he probably would have asked Geek Mike to stream instead. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. Ooh, I am, I'm plowing through this because I love you guys. And this is honestly a highlight of my week. So n no worries. <laughs> no worries. Um, I'm missing a couple questions. Geek Mike, did you grab one? Um, Bearded Frog was just wanting, oh. because you got on your ticker uh, going through with regarding the reunification project, and he was just wondering about any law that you can oh, uh, yeah, give sure. us on that. So, fun fact, I actually have talked about this Earthen uh, reunification project before. <laughs> what? Um, yeah, and it's technically unofficial. It's not approved by Uva. <laughs> 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 but basically, I think it works. I'm just going to explain it to you. I made the marquee in the bottom, so deal with it. <laughs> basically, um, whenever the colonials moved into the Beltagrades, like they sent, uh, you know, exploring parties and whatnot, and some of those made it back, some of them didn't. Obviously, then they sent on the colonialization of the Beltagrades. And when that happened, they encountered the Okar, everything kind of went crazy. And so then they had diplomats and everything. The expanse between soul, earth, right? Which does exist within our universe and the Beltagrades is, it's a very long distance, okay? Very massive span. It is not something that you can just travel in a couple minutes via super light or warp gate technologies. It has very highly advanced technologies in order to bring those groups over. And it probably has to do a bit with cryo sleep as well. But long story short, to cut to the chase, during the wars, during the Okar colonial conflict, the colonials were like, oh crap, we don't want these guys to go back to Earth. So the warp gate was destroyed, gone. Severed the connection back to Earth, can't get back there anymore, no longer there. So the signal would still be you know, out there technically if it's still on the side of Earth, but in the belt grades, no longer exist. It's gone, completely severed, can't get back to Earth. Now, that being said, after the war events, they were like, oh, hey, maybe we should reconnect this now that things have, you know, calmed down and everything. So they've created a new warp gate, have been sending a signal to reconnect, and it hasn't been. It's not, it's not connecting. The warp gate's back online, but the Earthen reunification project is a no-go. It's, it's, there is nothing out there to connect to. So that's uh, that's my lore and I'm sticking to it. I think it sounds awesome. Uvo, please approve it. And uh... <laughs> oh man, Michael's probably listening to all this and be like, okay, either he's brilliant or he's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, I digress, I digress. We don't have any sort of uh, components from Earth coming over into the Beltagrades anymore through any of our timelines that we've established. Like everything that's happening in the Beltagrades, it's all concentrated. It's all it, in and of itself happening here. So there is that. And uh, it's important to note that because yeah, it's that's just how it is. All of the colonial 
militarized assets. They, they're basically 16-ish years old, if not more. And, yeah. There you go. Uh, Michael did put something up regarding oh, oh, oh. when the information's going to be uh, oh, released. Oh, good. Okay. And it, and Wasn't it's lore be... stuff. Excellent. <clears throat> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're okay on that one. You're fine. He hasn't, he hasn't rung over yet. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be revealing on Monday afternoon Central European time, so we're just uh, time zones to suit. Yes. Yeah, and I, like I said, I mean, we've got about two minutes left here. Um, I am going to start a Discord event, and it is going to reveal the exact time. So if you do want to see that and you want to, like, approve that, it will notify you if you go into, like, the Discord events. You go to it and you say, like, I'm interested or whatever. It will ping you when the event goes live so you know trailers live and we'll link you and make the announcement all that type of stuff accordingly but you will know exactly when it drops so again i will be doing that shortly after this stream so you are all looped into it so um last but not least i'm still on these photos let's go ahead and issue a new challenge for the next week which i'll also be plugging into the discord we're going to go back to a delightful little screenshot challenge maybe even something similar to this the theme the focal point explosions i want to see the craziest wildest most badass looking explosions that you can capture in all of its glory the way that this will be handled is it will be posted into our community challenge channel which will be opened again shortly after the stream it will be a case-by-case -case basis of you voting for each other's works can you vote for yourself technically you can I think that's kind of weird, but that's fine. That's how emojis work. We don't want to like make this more complicated than it needs to be. May the best screenshotter win and give love to all of those who contribute because that's certainly what we do. All right. Okay, everybody. I believe that's everything for the stream. Um, yes, Geek Bite, was there anything that we missed? Uh, no, you've done very well. You haven't missed anything. So I, th I think I think we're all good there. So yeah, well done. Well done. <laughs> all right. Very, very good. All right. So um, guys, if you did miss anything on the stream, obviously you can catch this over on YouTube. You can watch the VOD over on Twitch as well. Um, but we did have a lot to show today. Uh, a couple of little elements that wasn't thinking we're going to be shown, but we did anyway. It was fun. So rewind the tapes, have a blast, share with your friends. It's always a good time to, you know, do this, have this space for you all and engage with you, just be with you. You are our lifeblood. You give us this energy. You give us the, the strength to persevere and really ring this home. You guys are awesome. And I am Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. And we will catch you next week after we deliver some very pleasant news. Toodles! Dex, that body we just found, when I saw it, it felt like that was still me in there. <laughs>